Hello maths fans! I'm back doing more math speed dating and today I'm joined by the wonderful Katie. Hello, I'm Katie from over at PhD with Katie and I'm a third year PhD biology researcher at Oxford looking at climate change in South America. Brilliant! Well, I, I immediately want to know more about <laughs> climate change in South America, uh, but I'm imagining we might get a chance to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, we can dip in and out of but it. But I will use this opportunity to mention to everyone watching, if you've never come across Katie's Instagram in particular, is how I know her, it's awesome. Um, so yes. you kind of give like an insight into the life of a PhD student. Yeah, it's very mixed, but PhD is obviously centre of my life right now. So that's what my Instagram is. Okay, so yeah, yeah. as well as talking about climate and climate, South America and Ecuador, trips everything. to the Galapagos <laughs> Islands. Pretty, I was very jealous of that one. Anyway, it's awesome stuff. So we will get to know Katie a lot better during this video, <laughs> as always, with the Math Speed Dating series. But again, I'll say it again at the end. I'm going to say it now. Go check out. Her Instagram channel. Okay, so um, do you know how this works? Yes, but okay. remind me of the rules. <laughs> yes, for everyone watching who has maybe never seen one of these videos before. Where have uh, you been? <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, where have you been? Uh, no, this is some ridiculous idea I came up with in terms of doing like an interview style video to get to know my guests a little bit better. Um, and the way it works, is Katie is going to roll this hopefully unbiased die. The, the, the data from previous videos suggest it might not be unbiased, but it is supposedly <laughs> unbiased. You're going to roll that. Mm -hmm. If you get, no, that's the wrong side. If you get a one or a two, we go to this jar, currently labeled maths, but Ooh. it is maths mm. slash like Oxford stuff. Okay. Because I'm aware often I have guests <laughs> who are mathematicians, Katie has informed me, warned me, yeah, <laughs> she doesn't really do maths. No. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but I put some Oxford based questions in there okay. as well. So this is kind of like... I can give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, three to four general questions. Nice. So these two jars, this is why it's called maths speed dating. Maths for that jar. Speed dating because these two jars contain questions from speed dating websites. Okay. So I am not responsible for the content of these questions. <laughs> um, blame the world of speed dating. They are, we have the general ones, which is like favorite movie, what do you listen to kind okay. of stuff. And then we have uh, what I've labeled fun. So they are these slightly more rogue questions. Okay. And you'll get a feel for what that means by answering those questions. Nice. Um, I'm hoping you will be willing to answer every question that is in this pot. Absolutely. Okay, well, I was about to say, if not, we'll, we'll, we won't answer it, but no. there you go. On camera, absolutely, yeah. we'll answer any question that comes out of that pot. No, anything, so. We're right, ready. does that all make sense and sound, yeah? Yes. Okay, ready. then please roll okay. the die. Straight oh, in there with a six. Straight in there. Classic, <laughs> um, unbiased die. <laughs> right, so uh, I'm going to ask you to pick out the question. Okay. So you're responsible for your own choices. My own fate. But then I'm going to read it out. <laughs> okay. Okay, and okay. I want to catch your reaction to the question. Oh, it's like doing like a raffle. It's cool. I can't even get it out. Like, oh, is it's that very, two? very high level budget of <laughs> pieces of paper I've cut it very badly. Oh, that's a long question. It's a good one to start. Oh, God, it's a good one to start. I'm nervous. If you could be granted three wishes, oh. what would they be? Oh, okay. On the spot immediately. I take it you can't ask for more wishes as one of your wishes. The usual okay. rules apply. Okay. You can't say, I'm now a genie. You can't say, okay. I can have infinite wishes. Uh, number one, pass my PhD with no corrections. Because once I'm done, <laughs> I want to be done. <laughs> like it, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, win the lottery, win the Euro Millions. Okay. That would yeah. be a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, my third wish would it be to discover a new species. That Ooh. would be cool. That's a, that's a very biology-led one. But yeah, maybe discover a new species. In the research you're doing, would that potentially lead you towards discovering a new species? Uh, potentially, but probably not. Because I use like camera traps and microphones. So most of the species are, but they're already recognised. I mean, the fact you're using... Okay, yeah. Tell us more about what your research is. Okay. In short. Um, so I look at community reforestation and how uh, indigenous communities planting trees and growing their own food forests impacts ecosystem health. And right. I kind mm -hmm. of monitor that using camera traps, bioacoustics, which look at bat and bird calls. Yep. And then I do some stuff with invertebrates, which would be more likely to find a species because there's 
so many more invertebrate species and insects. Yeah. Um, and then I do it with interviews as well and learn about why they're reforesting, what's up from reforesting. So it's kind more. of, would I be correct in saying it, there's an element of like people? Yeah, yeah. And, and how they are then impacting yeah. on the wildlife. Yeah, so, so it's you're... ecology and anthropology. So yeah. I marry the both. <laughs> Okay, awesome. It sounds like you could potentially then. It's, but it's like me saying, I wish I could discover a new species. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm sat in yeah, my office no solving yeah. equations. Probably, probably not going to happen. True. You never know. Okay, never all right. Know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, good set of wishes. Yeah. You're going to be finish the PhD, discover a new species, which would help to finish the PhD. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> probably that one comes first. And then, and then a million. Sorry. And then you're a million. Then you don't have to work ever again. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's a good start. Yeah, I'll okay. again. One. Oh, God. This is the part I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to end up with questions from all of them eventually. Good. Um, so. Okay. I hope it's Oxford, not maths. <laughs> it's an Oxford question. Oh, yes, get in. You've looked out. <laughs> Where is your favourite place in Oxford? Oh, that's a good question. Um, maybe Uni Parks, you know. I go for a walk every yeah. single day in that park. Uh, it's very peaceful. It's very mm -hmm. close to my college. Not full of people all of the time. It's quite quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's big, so you can have a proper wonder. You? Where's your favourite place? There's too many to choose from. Um, I really like this room we're in. This is... I walk in. <laughs> I walk in like, like, like the, There is a reason <laughs> I film in here very often. Um, so I, I think this is in terms of one of the more, there's obviously so many restricted places in Oxford yeah. that even if you're part of the university, you'll then yeah. have to be within some other select group of some other secret committee to then get access to. Well, I'm only in here because Tom's here. There's no, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be allowed in here without Tom's here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I do like, I do like the old library. Mm -hmm. uh, this is at Teddy Hall, St. Edmund Hall, my college. Mm -hmm. um, uni Parks is a good shout. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. I'm thinking, I also really like the meadows. Yeah, true. You know, like mm. like I do a lot of running and stuff, yeah. so it's just nice. Christchurch or Port, though? Oh, Port Meadow. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because it feels like, as you know, you, you within 10 minutes of running from anywhere in the city, if you run through Port Meadow, it feels like you're, you're in so, the Yeah, you're so far away from the city, but you're actually not. Yeah, yeah. so like I kind of like that element. It's one of my favourite things about Oxford, mm -hmm. which is, it feels like it's probably yours, given you say, said that you yeah. like the park and the green space. You kind it's, of go from crazy busy city centre to, oh, I'm like kind of in You feel like you're away for yeah. real, yeah, agreed. So, really nice all right, place. awesome. Um, can we get the full set in the first three? No. Oh no, we're going straight back yes. to the fun part. Woo! I like how you want the, I know. <laughs> the potentially- I'm avoiding this one with all- <laughs> More risky <laughs> questions. Do you have any nicknames? My family call me Katie Ketchup, because oh, I okay. absolutely love ketchup. Like on uh, everything, just are you, okay. you know what? I would you eat plain pasta with ketchup? That is one of my good pleasures. <laughs> okay, I'm a lot of judgment <laughs> right mom, now. Between... My mom used to like, be like Katie, you're not having that. And I was like, Mom, please. Okay, all right. But I haven't had it since like maybe the first year of uni undergrad. It's, it's a so solid student meal. Yeah. I, so when you're poor and you're a student loan, it's a solid option. I'm. I feel like you're going to judge me now, and everyone watching is going to judge me. It's probably very hypocritical of me to judge you for pasta and ketchup because one of my favorite meals when I was an undergrad mm -hmm. was rice and mayonnaise, which is kind of the same thing. It's like, no, here is a basic- below. Please comment below what is worse because that is definitely worse. Rice and mayonnaise for me is better than- Oh, I'm not a fan of rice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would pick um, rice over pasta. I, for me, I'd pick rice. Really, yeah. I think rice is the always. superior grain. Pasta. Always go pasta. <laughs> and I would argue mayonnaise is superior to ketchup. So I have like mayonnaise on my chips. They're like polar opposites there. Because I would not pick rice or mayo ever. Mayo mm -hmm. on your chips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't the, the Belgian? I think it's a Belgian thing. Ah, okay. But yeah, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I had the choice, I do like ketchup from time to time, but I would, I think I would go mayonnaise. Yeah, I even have pizza and ketchup. And everyone's like, that's tomato and tomato. Yeah, that, that's quite intense. <laughs> that's quite intense. Okay. Um, so ketchup, Katie, because you yeah. put ketchup on everything. Any okay. other nicknames? I don't. Think That's so. a pretty good nickname. Yeah, to be fair. I don't think so. I like that one. Oh yes. There we go. Full set. Woo! Which one is this? General. This is general. This is general. So okay. probably a little bit more standard questions. Okay. So if I could get to know me. My my categorising of these questions, <laughs> as any regular viewers will know, is pretty arbitrary. Um, but nonetheless, okay. Now this is a pretty standard question. Okay. Did you have any pets growing up? Yes. 
Uh, my first pet was a little bunny, bunny rabbit. It was called Bailey. And then okay. we got a guinea pig, and that was called Bentley. And that was it, you know. I never had dogs or cats or anything. My mum's not really a dog or a cat person. Okay. So I never had them. Had fish, but I don't think they really count as like pets. They're pets, you have to feed them. I think something you have to. I think it's something that you can like give affection to, though, is like more of a pet. I mean, you could give affection to a fish <laughs> if you really wanted to. Um, I actually, what I, so I had um, fish. Mm -hmm. I, I won some fish at a fair when I was like That's 16. the classic. Yeah, you yeah, go yeah. home and your mum's like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then I went and bought like a 20 pound tank from yeah. like Pets at Home. It was like SpongeBob themed, which was great. Uh, and then I put the fish in and then you're like, oh, they'll last a week, you know, mm -hmm. and then eight years later, they're still going and now they're like, they're too big for the tank yeah. and it's like a whole thing now. Now you have fish. Uh, but I used to talk to them. You know, I, can, so I, can I, I get what I you're saying. That, you can't yeah. cuddle them and whatever like yeah. you can with a cat. They can't come to you when you like walk in the yeah. door. <laughs> but like I used to talk to them, obviously. Yeah. You know. I, did, I forgot. I actually did have two hamsters as well, but we lost one of them under the oven. We got it back. We got it back. We had to take the, take apart the kitchen, but it did it did come back out of underneath the like cupboards. That was before. It the... was not alive. When it... it was alive. Oh, it yeah, was yeah, like it a god. I just it thought. Was, like... No, no, no. It was alive. It <laughs> was... You were gonna be like it cooked. <laughs> no. Went behind the oven. No. It came out. We thought, you know what? We're gonna just eat it. No. It was like crispy. No, it was the under there for like two hours, and then we were literally taking apart the kitchen wow. trying to find it. Like, like rescue yeah. mission. Mm. They, it's yeah. We we also had a pet hamster actually growing they up. They always cause trouble. I swear they. I was about to say yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> um, our, our hamster, my brother called it bacon because it was oh, his favorite. That's food. bad vibes. <laughs> I don't know. He, he called our hamster bacon. <laughs> And I remember, we had a few, but I remember bacon specifically, because I think the second one was called like bacon two. Okay. You know, Creative. classic kids' like names. It. Yeah, yeah. We had one of the balls that you put it in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it used to just charge down the stairs. You know, you'd like put all these things in the way and be, you know, you'd yeah, block yeah. the stairs and somehow, somehow it, gets it would like, I don't know, it would almost like construct a ramp <laughs> using like, I don't know, a pile of clothes and it yeah. would like go up. Yeah, and it would just oh, launch God. itself down the stairs, and you'd be like, "Oh no, poor hamster!" And it'd come out, and you feel like it's they laughing. They always at escape you. from the balls as well. They somehow they do always get out of the balls. Yeah, hamsters are dangerous pets. They are. They're fun though. Yeah, they're they, fun they though. Are good fun. Okay. Oh, general again. Mm-hmm. Okay, can I get some from the water? It's deceiving because they're all different sizes. I know. Again, like <laughs> it's, I like the ones that are really big because I got easy. to the bottom of the page oh, and was just cut, like <laughs> just couldn't really be bothered anymore. <laughs> do you snore? No, I actually don't. I don't think I do. Okay. You, you've never, never had I've someone never had be like... I've never had anyone tell me, no. Okay. And, but I know that when I sleep, I curl up and I don't move. Like, once I'm asleep, I just... I'm quite a good person, I think, to have to share a bed with or share a room with. Because you just, I just like, curl up, tuck up and then I'm Yeah. Okay. Although I did apparently used to laugh myself awake, which is freaky. Like, that is scary. If someone laughed... No. <laughs> I'm getting out of that room. Really. That's possessed. What about talking? I don't think I've ever slept talk. No. No. But I don't know what's worse, laughing or talking. So I definitely know that I talk in my sleep. God, I've obviously you know never that? heard it. Yeah, I've had very, tell you, uh, various people. Yeah. My mum used to tell me, like, when I was a kid, you know. I'd be nervous. She, I was going to say something. She'd open the door to say goodnight to me. <laughs> you know, I'm obviously, I've gone to bed a few hours oh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. She's just coming up, you know, mm -hmm. just as parents do, right? Yeah, checking your, like, what we were yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she said, <laughs> I'd just be, like, talking absolute nonsense. At least um, it's nonsense, though, not just, like... Yeah, there's one Trouble. I always remember that, that sticks in my mind where she said one time I just kept saying, the ball is rolling. Um, and then she was just like, oh, is it? And I'd be like, the ball is rolling. <laughs> she said she had this nonsensical conversation, but it kind of was a yeah. conversation. Yeah, you must have been dreaming about... Surely you I think I was dreaming about... about football because I play a lot of football. Ah, okay. So I think it was something to... Okay. That was what she... This is or literally hamster, 20 years ago. Is, or the hamster ball. Or the hamster ball. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was dreaming of being a hamster. <laughs> Possibly. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so no snoring, but potential. No, no you, you said no. not laughing, but... No, not anymore. I used to, well, not recently I know of, so... <laughs> Four again. Top one. Ooh, I thought this would be an interesting answer from you. If you could live anywhere in the world... Where would it be? In the Galapagos. Well, in a heartbeat, I've said that since I left, literally the day I left, I was like, I'm coming back here, I'm going to live there. Um, it's very, very hard to move there. Even if you, yeah. not that this would be my route, but if you marry a Galapagosian person, you don't get your visa until 10 years of marriage. So it's one of the strictest places. So you'd have to what? But what if they live there? They'd have to move off the island. They, you can you can move there with them, but you just don't get a visa. So if you divorce, you have to leave immediately. Okay. Um, yeah. They're very desperate for scientists and conservationists. So yeah. 
Hopefully. It's actually a possibility that I might be able to go and live there for a bit. So, I've also been to the Galapagos and mm -hmm. it's amazing. But I sometimes think these places you visit as a tourist, mm -hmm. as a visitor, as a scientist, I guess yeah. in your instance, though, would you... Would it be the same living there? Does it like lose its magic if you live there, I guess? I don't think it's losing its magic, because, but you obviously begin to take it for granted. Like, yeah. I take Oxford for granted. Oh, yeah, same. Like, I, I walk around on my phone and I don't look up. And I'm like, yeah, and then you have people visit and they're just like, the yeah. buildings, you're like, oh, yeah, they are kind of cool. They're kind of cool, <laughs> yeah. You, so, you, so, so I think that's natural wherever you live. True. But I just wonder, as much as I loved visiting the Galapagos and would absolutely go back mm -hmm. for every and all opportunities, <laughs> um, do I actually want to live there? I feel like it'd be quite isolated. I guess it's full of tourists. True. Most tourists are great, but some aren't. True. <laughs> I guess it would be like whether the question is for life or like now if some I could live anywhere. Yeah. Because okay. if it was for life, then I actually wouldn't go there. there would, I would probably choose somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But, but right now, if I could live anywhere, it would be there. Okay. But 97% yeah. of all of the islands are uninhabited. It's only 3% they can build on and have people in. So. That's why it's difficult yeah, to that's get a visa. Why it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, definitely there right now. Okay. Here we go, next. Four. Oh, general again. It's definitely bias. So but it's normally biased towards sixes, so. Is it bias or biased? This would be bias because it's single. Oh, see, I, I would have thought it was biased. I would describe the or is, die is it the as biased. Biased. The biased die. I don't know. English someone, master, someone, someone who is <laughs> better at English someone. than us. <laughs> okay, exploring or lazing on the beach. Exploring. Okay. I think there's a time. Feel like you were tempted. Yeah, then. there's a time and a place for both. Yeah, but if you could only do one, that's what I was going to say. Exploring, exploring. I think that exploring. comes from like science, psychology, and stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely exploring. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, especially the beach pool. Can't really explore around that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Beach, <laughs> beach over pool. But no, yeah, but generally on a holiday as well, definitely exploring rather than lazing. Yeah. Oh, oh god. Maybe there will be a maths question. <gasps> I mean, it's not actual maths; it's just related to. Even maths. if it was maths, I'd have a go. But oh yeah, it, it's it's a maths question. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think you'll be I think you'll be okay to answer this one. Okay. Do you have a favorite number? Yes, I have two favorite numbers: seven, Ooh. seven and twenty-three. Okay, both prime. Yeah, I was going to say they're both prime numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they your favourite numbers? Uh, this, is, this is actually really embarrassing. Uh, number 23 I picked when I was in like year eight because okay. I went to go and see One Direction on the 23rd of the month. And I was like, that's a great number. <laughs> and I actually, like it. But it's... actually ever since then, right, on the 23rd or like at 11pm or 11, yeah. like anything to do with 23, something good always happens. So it's kind of stuck with me. That's a good number. Yeah. Seven, I'm not really sure. I just quite like seven. It's a bit odd, a bit funky. No one really like. It's like everyone's favourite number yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, so to be, I, when I play football, I wear the number seven shirt. Okay. But that's kind of because of the position I play on the yeah. pitch. And, and, you know, my favourite players always wore the number seven and stuff. Um, and aside from that, my, my favourite number is three divided by two to the power of nine quarters which is just a ridiculously <laughs> mathematical number because it came out in my PhD thesis. It's in one of my formulas. Oh, it okay. appeared in one of my formulas, okay. so it just had to become my number. Do you have a tattoo of it or not? Not of that one. I've got oh. one of my other equations from okay. my PhD here, but it's not the one that not has the, the, yeah. the favourite number in. Um, so, no, I, I like your 23 one. I feel yeah. like that is... There is some reason to it. Yeah, there, even there, if it's there very is, yeah. embarrassing and hilarious, that <laughs> yeah. it's because I don't you think I've ever told secret. anyone that either. So <laughs> top secret info there. <laughs> Being told to the yeah. internet. Yes, <laughs> I was a huge One Direction fan. So, <laughs> oh, who wasn't? Oh, yeah, true. Guilty pleasure, absolutely. Four. Back to general. No one has ever emptied a pot during this. Really? Maybe, I feel like maybe. you're, you're doing. <laughs> I'm making you're trying your pot. best. Another one. What colour best describes your personality? Ooh. Such a speed dating question. Is that like a psychological thing? Is there is there colours that best describe personalities? Or is that just like a BuzzFeed quiz? I think it's definitely a BuzzFeed <laughs> quiz. I feel like there is some psychology behind it. I like would... like if you say to somebody, what colour do you think of when you think of the word happy or the emotion jealousy? Oh, okay, yeah, there must there be. There are definite yeah. connections that are... With colours. Yeah. Um... 
I'm going to say pink. Okay. Pink, yeah. Because I just like pink for a start. Pink's my favourite colour. But also, I'm quite fiery, but I'm also quite like a happy person. I know that makes orange, but in the middle is kind of pink. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on that, it's yeah, on that it's end, on, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of the warmer colours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit in the middle. If you're on a colour okay. wheel, it would be in the middle somewhere-ish. Yeah. So yeah, fiery slash happy kind of go together, I think, to make pink. Yeah, because I think I, I was, I mean... Again, I'm sure someone will tell me if this is incorrect. I was thinking yellow is usually the happy colour. Yeah. Yellow yeah, and yeah. orangey because mm -hmm. you kind of the sun and I don't know. Yeah, bright and There's like cheery. a connection. Smiley face. So yellow. yeah, so I guess you're right. Kind of orange, but pink works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it. Yeah, it's still good. Again. You really are going to wow. try your best to get through all of these questions. <laughs> Just trying to avoid this pot. <laughs> Which you're doing a good job. Yeah. Um, what do you like to do most in your free time? Oof. So yeah, I'm not... such a doom scroller. I, just I was about to say, when you're not on social media <laughs> and you're not discovering new species in um, the Amazon rainforest. In my free time, what do I do? Doom scrolling is fine if you... Do, do you... Okay, when you say the word doom scroller, <laughs> so is that because you're annoyed that you do it or you're just using it because that's how people describe it? Because some people, and I think this is fine, right? It, it can sometimes be fun to just scroll through social media yeah. for hours. Like, if, if, you know, if you are getting enjoyment out of that. The thing is, I'm not... It's weird because I'm on my phone a lot, but a lot of it is not scrolling. It's like editing or emailing or sometimes working with my PhD on my phone, like really badly doing emails on my phone. It's not good. Um, so I spend a lot of time on my phone, which is not good. But also drinking wine with friends in like nice bars is one of my favourite ways to spend my time. If I could spend more time doing that, I definitely would. <laughs> okay. Wine specifically? Wine, cocktails. I don't drink beer. So anything okay. that's not beer, yeah, basically. <laughs> well, no, I was going to ask, do you, like, are you a I, wine I also, connoisseur? But... I do, um, yeah, I do enjoy good wine. Do so, good wine. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. have been, um, do you get good wine at the formals? Yeah, Oxford? it's also unlimited and free, which is a problem. Well, it depends you know? on the formal you go to. Depends on the college, depends yeah. on the formal. At my college, it's unlimited and free. Okay, well, there we <laughs> so go. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do get quite the opportunity to be able to do that. But, yeah. yeah. Other than that, um, I used trampoline. That was my sport oh, choice. Oh, okay. Yeah, and do dance, but not anymore. Because of time restrictions? Time, or? and then I was away in Ecuador, so I didn't go in Michael's term, and then just, yeah. Because there is, like, I know there's a university trampolining society. That's where I trampolined, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Because yeah. when I was an undergrad, played for the football team, we went on a crew date with the trampolining really? society. <laughs> yeah. So crew dates for those watching who, it's a very Oxford weird thing. <laughs> Have you been on any crew dates? Yeah, we did a couple. We did one with... I want to say the rugby boys, which is a bit of a weird merging, but meh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like it's like organized fun, right? You get yeah. you have a. Um, it doesn't have to be a um, girls team and a boys team, but often is. Yeah. Usually sports teams, but can also be other societies. And you all kind of when we used when I got it's been years since I did one, but we used to sit boy girl around the table mm -hmm. just so you're. Or you know, you're or you're sitting alternating between the societies. You get to like around the board. table, so you're forced to get to know new people. And mm -hmm. then you play lots of very silly games. Did you have sconcing? Um, yes, yeah. sconcing. Uh, <laughs> so, sconcing, you put a penny in someone's drink and it's a bit like never have I ever. Is that right? Or have I, have I merged two there? You've merged pennying and sconcing ah, together. Yeah, it's been ages. At least from what I remember. Yeah. So the, the so pennying is if someone, if you're holding the drink. Ah, yeah, yeah, and then you have to finish and it. And you put a, someone puts a penny yeah. in it, you have to finish the drink. And it's But if you're is, not holding it, you're safe. Yeah. So you just have to be careful. So you don't, you never sit like this. Because yeah, Because then yeah, someone, yeah. you're asking for yeah, someone yeah. to get you. And sconcing is where you kind of say, sort of, a never have I ever. It's like... But they're really aimed. They're really yeah, pointed yeah. at You have dirt on someone at the table and you're like, oh, I sconce anyone who has done blank. And usually it's really embarrassing. It's definitely not suitable for YouTube. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I will not be revealing what any of mine were from back in the day, but it's all good fun. Yeah, they're, they're all fun. good fun. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> It really doesn't want me to reveal too much or embarrass myself, does it? <laughs> the maths or the fun not. ones. Okay. What YouTube channels do you watch? Who do I watch? Um... We can extend it to Instagram if that would be easier, as that's your main uh, platform of choice. Tom Ross Maths. <laughs> that is the <laughs> contractual mention of my channel right there. <laughs> uh, who else? Um, 
I always watch someone called Rhiannon Ashley, but she doesn't post very much anymore. Okay. She yeah, also used to be of... called Fashion Rocks My Socks. So, okay. Like rocks, so it's like rocks, a fashion yeah. based. But now she's not oh. like, now she's just like a lifestyle okay. blogger. Uh, I'm guilty of watching Molly May. She's my guilty pleasure on the background mm -hmm. while I'm working. Um, Instagram channels, I watch Take Heart. I'm not sure if I know what that is. It's like a fashion lifestyle. Okay. Um, not very many, you know. I, all of my friends say, like, Katie, how is your screen time so high? I don't actually consume that much content. A lot of it is just, like, <laughs> making content or filming yes. content. So yeah. my screen time is, like, four hours just because I've been filming for four hours a day. Yeah. More than that, but four hours on the camera app. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You? Who do you watch? What do you... Um, yeah. I will watch pretty much every number file video mm, that okay. comes out because... You know. Number five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have to watch my own ones because I have yeah. to make sure I uh, haven't said anything silly, right? Yeah. You know? As the presenter, you'd get like the final run through mm -hmm. before it goes live to be like, did I say everything correct in this? <laughs> um, so no, I will often watch the majority of new number five mm -hmm. videos, mainly because I know the people talking. And yeah. also I feel like it's a really good way of getting a feel for like other fun bits of maths that's like less yeah. academic because it's like, mm -hmm. it's it's introducing me to potentially other ideas and like fun aspects of maths that I mm. might not have thought about so it gives me inspiration yeah, for my own content as well prompts and stuff yeah um cool. so definitely that um I used to watch a lot of uh, Mike Boyd Mike Boyd's I channel heard. so um I've made a few videos with Mike um so his sort of uh thing his channel's awesome he now just does rock climbing which is also really cool <laughs> but I <laughs> I preferred it when um, <laughs> he was learning new skills. So he would just learn really random skills. That's quite cool, actually. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, like, because his, like, whole life was just like, what am I learning this month? So yeah. he learned how to, um, one of them was to, like, throw playing cards really powerfully so they would, like, stick into an apple. So you put, like, an <laughs> apple a few meters away and then you throw a playing card and there's a technique to get it to... Does he create these things or is that, like, a general... People suggest them to him sometimes okay. and, you know, you can kind of look up, like... Yeah, okay. They're kind of, like, party tricks rather than skills, a lot of them. Yeah. He can shatter... It's a niche. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he can shatter a wine glass with his voice. That's one of my favourite ones, actually. He if just, I start like... singing, that's what happened right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get the right frequency. Pitch, yeah. And... Um, he can. He did the whole the classic um, saber, the bottle of champagne with the uh, sword. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're all like really random skills, and some of them he learns in like three hours, and some of them it literally takes him the whole month. I was going to say to learn to throw a card, a to aim at an apple and b with enough force. Yeah, It'd yeah, yeah. That pretty, one's pretty tough. Yeah, super niche. Yeah. But um, I, yeah, so I, I really used to watch a lot of his uh, videos just because it's just very fun to watch. That you can tell I'm a teacher, right? Yeah, Watching yeah, that yeah, learning experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not in an academic setting. Yeah. Did you ever try any of the things of... that he tried? Were you inspired? Um, not properly, because <laughs> a lot of the time you could see how long it had taken yeah. him to master. And I'm like, yeah, it would be cool to shatter a wine glass, but do I have a spare 48 hours? <laughs> Yeah, to smash no. it instead. Yeah. <laughs> do I have spare wine glasses? Could that just I crack can... the champagne with your hand. <laughs> No, the champagne one I can do, not with the sabre, because, you know, it means going out and finding saber, the yeah. sabre, right? <laughs> you probably could get one in Oxford. True, there's um, one in this college somewhere. There definitely. almost certainly will be a sabre. Um, but no, the, the, I sort of did the, the cheat way where you, you can put a bottle of wine in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So it goes really, really cold. And then you get the bottom of the glass and you just tap it at the right oh, point okay. where the little lip is. And it oh, will and it flies off because oh, okay. of the pressure. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's cool. There's, there's cool science in it. That's cool. Um, definitely. Physics. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I'd say they're probably the two that immediately come to mind. Pretty cool. But yeah, anyone who does maths, right? If... <laughs> oh, also, he didn't say my channel at PhD with Casey. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me for YouTube. I have a YouTube. Okay. I just never post. <laughs> um, you go to three, you're not. Okay, no. we'll go with six. Okay. It was oh, a three sorry, on the it, floor. It no, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. The floor sorry. doesn't count. So we, we did a re-roll because you got a different number. <laughs> yeah. I'm breaking the boundaries of this one. If I gave you £10,000, mm -hmm. how would you spend it? I would take my mum to Australia. That's cute. Yeah. yeah. Does she, she really want to go or you really she, want to go? Or? I really want to go because I've never been. Yeah. But she lived there for six months and she never got to the Great Barrier Reef. And she always says it's her biggest regret not doing it. Okay. So yeah. that's what I would do with that money. And it would probably take all of the £10,000, to be honest. So I would have 
Maybe one pound left over. <laughs> <laughs> so I recently, uh, when I mentioned I was in Australia, Did you go? Zealand, oh. I went to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, but it's dying now, so I'm going to take her soon. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> bit I went to, you, you couldn't tell. Okay. But, you know, there are only certain points where the boats are allowed. Yeah. And I'm imagining they're only going to take you to the bits that clearly aren't all <laughs> bleached, right? Cause, yeah. Because yeah, you're going to, of course, see yeah. the turtles, the sharks, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to the bits that are doing... Um, I don't know if they are necessarily thriving, but the bits that aren't bleached they're and aren't living, dying. Yeah. Um, so the bits I saw, which is obviously a tiny, tiny fraction of it, were awesome. Oh, okay. Uh, so no, it's um, it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. Is what I would yeah. say. Yeah, the thing is, I think getting there and like getting no getting there obviously is a very long flight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but then once you were there, I did like a three day liveaboard oh, so cool. on the boat. So you would. Um, I actually it was the first time properly that I'd been scuba diving, and I did eight dives over the three days. That's quite good actually. That's which is really a lot good. of dives. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, would recommend that if okay. you. <laughs> Mum, if you're watching. Yes, go go live aboard a ship. <laughs> Find me ten grand, and I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's cute. I appreciate that you were like immediately thought of someone else. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Back to my favourite pot. Apparently. Ooh. I don't know what happens if we actually run out of questions. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the video ends. <laughs> what are you currently listening to? I'm currently listening do you mean music wise book wise open to interpretation okay. you can give us both if you would like i am currently listening to a book called why we sleep which is very interesting would recommend mm -hmm. also listening to a book called period power which mm -hmm. is obviously about periods yep. and i'm also listening to poached which is about the wildlife trafficking trade mm -hmm. all very different so you can listen to multiple audiobooks because <laughs> yeah depends what mood you're in yeah it depends what right. i'm fancying um and then music wise i'm listening to a lot of thames She's kind of taken off recently. Okay. Yep. And who what else? type of music? Is there mm. a genre there? If you, it's kind of like I, I feel like most artists, you can't really put them in a genre anymore. Yeah. But... Uh, mainly R and B, I'd say. Okay. R and B. Other than that, not much. I always have music playing, but my Spotify playlist, I don't have. I just have all of my liked songs, and there's like right, five thousand, so. so it's just hit shuffle. And, and is it? Would you say the predominant genre is like R and B or like noughties R and B? Yeah, noughties R and B. Noughties R and B. Very specific. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A couple of One Direction songs in there, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get really that. Good. Let go of my my history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, woohoo! I'm really doing well on the boiling list. You, you are, you are. Do you have any questions that never, that's never been answered or never been picked out that you, that you know of? I feel like I should keep track of this. Yeah, because you should like put them at the top. So that <laughs> <laughs> keep it. Yeah, once once a question has been answered three times, like retire yeah, it, bye. retire it from the game. <laughs> I'm not sure we've ever had this one. Oh, okay. I don't remember this one ever being Ooh. asked, and it's a good one. It's probably quite tricky to answer though. If you were to advertise yourself on a billboard, oh, what would your slogan be? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. and, and, and again, I love that apparently you're going speed dating with somebody <laughs> and you're like, right, let's talk billboard slogans. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's a really difficult one. Um, oh. So really you describe yourself as like fiery? Is that like Yeah. A... That would be quite good for a speed dating one, I reckon. So what fiery the... and... Fiery, funky, and fancy. There you go, the triple three. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We've because got the... funky, something I don't really show very much on social media or like my public accounts is like I love going out and like festivals, having a boogie, but it doesn't really fit with my content a lot of the time, so it just stays mm -hmm. on yeah. private. And then I'm not actually that fancy, but all of my friends take the mickey and say that I'm really fancy and bougie. I'm not. But they like they know that I like wine and stuff, so Okay. And yeah. I guess now being at Oxford as well, they're like, Yeah, oh, exactly. Fancy, fancy and, and, yeah, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> um Fiery, funky and fancy. Yeah. Well it's nothing to do with what I do, so it's just like it's just like a close-up of your face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nothing <laughs> else. And then just underneath fiery, funky <laughs> yeah. and fancy, call just, Katie. <laughs> me just holding an animal from the Amazon, like <laughs> What would yours be? That's a really hard question, you know. Uh well. <sighs> I guess it would probably be the tagline from my website, which is maths, but not as you know it. That's a good one. That's a good one. I feel like that yeah. kind of fits like the billboard slogan. Yeah. Kind of vibe. Of... Enticing people yeah, to like, sort of like watch slash it's listen. Like, 
I'm doing maths, but you know, it's hopefully not what you were expecting that yeah. I would be doing. It's kind mm. of. It's not a chalkboard and like. Well, it is a chalkboard. <laughs> yeah, but not super long, really nasty. Make it fun, at least. Trying, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe something like that. Mm. Sort of. That's yeah. much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not a competition. <laughs> Four. We are actually going to run out. I know. DIY or call an expert? DIY. You know, I actually used to work at Screwfix, which if you're oh, not in the UK, yeah, that's a good reveal. In the UK, that is a, like a home home improvement store, DIY store. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like a tradesperson store, basically. Yeah. Plumbers, electricians, you name it, they came in. So I'm actually very good at DIY. I love doing, uh, like, putting things together, making things. IKEA furniture. Would, would you get people coming in and being like, I'm doing such and such a job, blah, blah, blah. What do I need? Like, Yeah, I only worked there for like a year and a half. But honestly, after like six months, a lot of the stuff is the same. And I actually would know the answer. But my mum also worked there at the same time, which was great because if I was hungover, she'd cover my shift, which was great. <laughs> and also I'd be like, mum, I don't know what this, what this guy needs, what this woman needs. She'd come in nice. straight away. So I... <laughs> So, you, so it sounds like you enjoyed working with yeah, your Yeah, but I'm also good at DIY, so yeah. Because I also had to work with my mum when I was 16. Oh, okay. You didn't so enjoy I that? Had, no. So <laughs> I had a Saturday job. Um, so she worked at, uh, she was cashier in a bank, mm -hmm. High Street Bank, and then got me a job just on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Really, really well paid for like a 16 Banks are paying job. well, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was just serving people, taking money out, whatever. But again, I would also be very hungover because obviously it's... <laughs> Well, I shouldn't have been because I was 16. But anyway, right, I would be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, UK in the early 2000s, yeah. especially. Um, Drinking like Blue Lightning. Was it good? Um, Scrumpy Jacks, bit of oh. the, which we is a bit better than Blue than yeah. White Lightning or whatever. White, yes. like we used to have Frosty quite. Jacks. It's Frosty like, Jacks. Yeah. Scrumpy Jacks is like the less budget version of Frosty Jacks. Okay. But okay. it's the yeah. same. It's the same, same thing. Same it tastes like apple juice, but it's got alcohol. Yeah. Um, but like she was always really, really harsh on me. Because she yeah. used to, I think, she felt like it reflected on her if I wasn't doing that my is, job well. Fair, yeah. Um, so actually, we both hated it. <laughs> like <laughs> having like, to actually work. She's got together. your job, and now she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. She regretted getting the job. <laughs> I think. Uh, so no, she would usually try and swap shifts and not have to work when I was there. Ah, uh, okay. Because that was a It was easier thing, for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So uh, interesting, but it sounds like for you it was good. Yeah, it was great. Okay, fine. We enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, this one. Two. Cool. Eek. What are you going to get off? No, we already had a math question. Yeah, we've had one. one. But that's, that's fine because it's not actually solving something. No, none of them asked you to solve anything. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. Um, okay. Do you have a favourite puzzle? Puzzle? Um, uh, I suppose this is usually aimed at mathematicians because most mathematicians can tell you their favorite puzzle uh, <laughs> but maybe you can interpret that in terms of uh, I don't know related to your own subject or I was maybe actually, like a I was gonna say I like Sudoku okay yeah, yeah. all right yeah yeah I okay. actually quite that, is, Sudoku. that is yeah. a very like mathematical numbers, puzzle. yeah numbersy question not too hard though I can't be doing those ones that have like one number no. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's really hard just to keep track of what you've tried and failed yeah and like, then you've got like so many pencil marks because the, the yeah. really hard ones i mean again i'm not an expert but the really hard ones as far as i understand is you have to guess and so then many, follow it yeah. almost all the way through and then you run into a dead end and you have to be like okay so the guess i made 43 turns ago was wrong, was wrong yeah and then go back and try a different guess right like yeah no, the, the, those ones are pretty intense yeah but um, i don't want to do especially on a plane or in like a little on holiday yeah or book yeah probably that okay all right. See, the mass questions are like that. <laughs> oh, and again. <laughs> God, that, that giggle, I'm like, oh dear. Well, the question is, <laughs> do you have a favourite millennium problem? And I'm going to imagine, not being a maths person, you're going to be like, what the hell are the millennium problems? Can I change that to a millennial problem? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is your favourite millennial problem? Let's do that one. Um, I don't even know the answer to that. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what a millennial problem is. Mille yeah, millennium problem. Um, my biggest millennial problem. Um, this is going to sound really bad. Probably when you can't check in on your phone. 
No, that, I feel like go. that's a very millennial. I don't, I don't print it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, uh, luckily, yeah. I get, you get print credit at college, so you can print out your boarding pass. But <sighs> I'm flying. I'm <laughs> yeah, flying yeah. soon no, with fair. Turkish Airlines, yeah. and you can't have it on your phone. And I'm so stressed because I've got to go to the the thing and check in, which I haven't done in. Literally what if you have a check bag? Or do you just never have a check bag? I still I do, but I still have the like thing on my phone, which is like then also if you lose the paper, you're stuck in Abu Dhabi or wherever I'm going to be. No, <laughs> yeah, that's probably my biggest thing. <laughs> okay, but what if your phone battery runs out, or are you just so prepared that would never happen? You'd have like eight charging. As a creator, though, packs you know and... I've got like so many yeah, different yeah, yeah, yeah. Port like portable Don't leave chargers. Home without a charger. Yeah, and then a different charge. Yeah. That's far okay. less likely than me losing a paper. I'm so clumsy. I would leave it like in the behind the pocket seat or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a good answer to your favourite millennial yeah. problem. Millennial problem. What's yours? Yeah. Millennium problem. Millennium. Okay. Maths fans well, watching. I was going to give you as <laughs> hope. If anyone watching this is a mathematician, they will they will hopefully have an idea of the uh, what the millennium problems are. But I will give you a sixty yeah. second explanation. Please do. Um, so in the year two thousand, we as mathematicians. Um, obviously not me personally, got involved and picked out seven biggest unsolved problems facing mm -hmm. mathematicians mm -hmm. at that time. And each one has a $1 million prize. Oh. It's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. It's really cool. So obviously they are insanely difficult, mm -hmm. but there are these seven. One of them was solved uh, actually was in 2005, 2006 by a Russian guy who then turned down the money. And that's like a whole thing. It's like a story. He didn't do any interviews, so we don't know why, but like supposedly it's kind of like didn't want the fame that came with, you know, first person to solve I would like the fame, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, it's funny because <laughs> if that is true, he's more famous as the person who turned yeah. down a million dollars than if he just accepted just the million that. dollars. Yeah. Well, so but, a million is like, it's a lot of money, but it's not like you've won like a billion or like the Euro millions. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was a bigger deal in the year 2000. That is true. That, uh, we're talking about the financial crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're still a million dollars. Like, they, I don't think they've increased. Oh, okay. In so it's not inflation, inflation yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right. Ooh, again. What are you currently watching? What am I currently watching? Um, the same thing. That I've watched probably eight times now. Brooklyn Nine Nine is my comfort TV show, yeah. And it's such a good uh, like break between work. It's twenty minute episodes, and I can have it on yeah. the background because I've watched it so many times. Yeah. So currently, that and Bridgerton, of course, big Bridgerton <laughs> fan. Is that the, um, the new season? Yeah, the new, the new season. season, the new season yeah, they right? split yeah, it into yeah. two, which was annoying because I watched half and then had to wait. Like, is it out now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh, out okay, now. Okay. Second half. Yeah. Um. So that's just finished. So I now have to wait on two years for the next one. I'll just rewatch the other ones. I'm quite it's... like a, I'm a clinical rewatcher. <laughs> okay, right. So when you say you have to wait another two years, this is something that kind of annoys me about modern yeah. TV shows. Mm -hmm. It's like it's amazing that they have such big budgets and have yeah. all of these incredible costumes and settings and you know incredible writing. But it's also like if you just kind of dial it back a little bit and you give me a season every year. Spit it out a bit more frequently. Come yeah, on, I want know. some more episodes. Like... It's like, I feel like, yeah, it, it's sort of, I don't know what the sweet spot is. Yeah. Is it better to have a slightly smaller budget and like it to be like a little bit less impressive, but be able to produce something every year? Yeah, I think so. Because well, sometimes there's... the two year break, I'm like, I don't remember what happened. Yeah, it is difficult. There's eight Bridgerton books as well. Okay. So like, this is season three and there was like a spin off. The Queen Charlotte series, but there's a lot more to it's come. Gonna I'm going to be like 40 yeah, by yeah, the time yeah. <laughs> yes. it's all done. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. Needing to Shondaland, come on, yeah. production <laughs> increase. Yeah, but that and Britain Online. Okay. To. You? What do you watch? What are you watching? Currently? Um, what am I watching currently? I, as of yesterday, started watching the latest season of The Boys, Ooh. the Amazon show. Um, so it's <laughs> it's it's very graphic and very dark humour. Okay. But um, it's, uh, how would I describe the boys? Superheroes mm -hmm. exist in the world. So it's kind of like Marvel, except mm -hmm. the superheroes are like bad. So they're not like villains. Okay. They're presented as though they're superheroes, but actually they're all horrible people and they're all very selfish. <laughs> it's, like very, it's like if superheroes were like actually behave like humans. Okay. Okay. In a way, because like, you yeah. know, Marvel, it's like superheroes are all about doing good and saving people. Yeah, it's like in the boys, yeah. they're all kind of like 
<laughs> very, that. very selfish. And, you know, they're all about how can I make money? And okay. it's like they only save people if there's someone filming it on a camera as opposed to for the good. You know, it's like very uh, like okay. yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah, yeah. So it, I really like it because it has that kind of, um, I guess, fantasy fictional element of it being superheroes. Because they all have like, you know, what the main guy, Homelander, like shoots lasers out of his eyes and whatever. Right? He's, he's kind <laughs> okay. of eventually like the Superman. Um, but, you know, he's the biggest, baddest of the, all of them. Um, but then it kind of has like a really nice take on sort of like modern society. I was going to say, if I like things that have like an element of society in them. You can yeah. actually like it really does. It, it really like... does. And like the the creators, I feel like every season they try and be on purpose, like be more and more controversial <laughs> with like the references they make and the jokes they make okay. and, and various things. That's cool. So it's I, I recommend it for anyone watching and for yourself. It, it's a very fun watch. Okay. Uh, but yeah. it is also quite violent. So okay. I might watch it before bedtime. <laughs> yeah. I, I watched it before bed last night and it was good. Ooh. Five. Okay. Get my nails done. I've got an appointment tomorrow. <laughs> if you were an animal, what would you be and why? Oh, that's a good question for me, actually. It is. Um, mm, I think I'd be an albatross. Okay. Anyone that doesn't know, that's a big bird. Yep. Uh, they are beautiful for a start. They have massive wingspan. They're mm -hmm. monogamous, so they mate for life. They're quite cute. And they can fly. And the waved albatross lives in the Galapagos. So yes. two in one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how you get <laughs> to the Galapagos. Yeah. Turn into an albatross. Yeah. Go and live in the Galapagos. Yeah. Have a great time. Yeah, I think it'd be an albatross. I'd love to fly. That would be my superhero power as well. Yeah. So... Yeah, what about you? What would you be? Oh God, um, if I could be an animal, I'd be tempted to be like a whale. I was actually going to say a whale as well. Got to be a big whale that nothing's going to eat you though. Like yeah, yeah, because of that, I think that safety yeah, yeah. of being like, you're not like a mean predator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, because obviously yeah. you could be safe by being like a lion and stuff, mm -hmm. but then it kind of feels like you have to go and prey on like poor little baby deer yeah. and things. It's just kind of a bit mean yeah. in a way. So I feel like, if you're a whale, you're just kind of, you know, you're just filtering water through your teeth and that's how you eat. It's great. Yeah, and everyone's in awe of you. Yeah. Like, all humans. Like, nothing's going to kill you. You can't, you can't be killed if you're and a And you're sort of, they're whale. very graceful. They're very intelligent yeah. creatures. Mm -hmm. I think there's, um, and you're just, like, really big. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, being, yeah. like, a 20-meter creature. You eat what you want and just not even think yeah. about, like, yeah. It's just kind of cool. So, and, and the freedom of being able to explore the whole ocean. So you can go anywhere What they've the seen world. as well, like, yeah. You could, yeah. Sort yeah. of, um, so I guess it's kind of similar to possibly why you like want to be able to fly because you can just you see it, yeah, go see anywhere. Yeah. So you know you're a bit more restricted because you're in the water, but you know they do pop their head up every night. Yeah. <laughs> you could go see all of the coasts <laughs> yeah. around the world, yeah, uh, and go from cold to hot and still be pretty chill about it. That's true. Because they go all the way up to, you know, yeah, North and South Pole as well as Equator and whatever. So yeah. yeah, I think I think probably a whale. I've never actually thought about that question. Really? No. Oh, no. That's a good, a good answer. <laughs> All right. Six. Okay. This is a classic. <laughs> if you can invite anyone, dead or alive, to dinner, who would it be? Let's do your three dinner party guests. Oh, okay. Carlos Sainz. <laughs> okay. He's an F1 this... driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh, really fancy Carlos Sainz. I was about to say, I, I, <laughs> I didn't want to judge, but I was like, is this, you can like play footsie with Carlos yeah. under the table. Okay, oh. right. Yeah. Carlos Sainz. Um, <laughs> uh, Harry Styles, purely because I would, he's been my answer since I was right, like yeah. 11. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I feel like he has really cool like that. celebrity stories. Yes, he would, I imagine, um, yeah. Very good dinner conversation. And then... Depends how I'm feeling on the day, either Beyonce or David Attenborough. I knew you were going to say David Attenborough. I was about to be <laughs> like, probably, surely David Attenborough probably is Probably actually biologist, David but... Attenborough because Harry Styles could give me Beyonce's drama and goss from yeah. the like, celebrity realm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, David Attenborough, Harry like Styles. That. But I'm also, I'm a feminist. I'm not picking any females there. The next night I'd pick three, three women. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could, you could trade Harry for Beyonce then, couldn't you? True, know? yeah. Just, yeah. It's because as you say, Some I feel like both of them would have stories. <laughs> yeah. And obviously could talk about that kind of celebrity culture, yeah. music industry. All of the, obviously David yeah. and 
everything about oh, wildlife and biology. His life story would be insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can. And then Carlos just goes. Do it while really staring <laughs> into Carlos's eyes as he just <laughs> speaks beautiful Spanish. I also really do like watching F1 as well. So, yeah. Cool to get awesome. some inside goss. Yeah. Five. Oh, yes. Danger pot again. Like danger pot, fun pot. It used to be called the danger pot. <laughs> it's putting people off. Oh. Thank you. Well, I did have six jars, but then I, I feel like lots of them weren't getting selected. Yeah, you can't, so yeah. I kind of narrowed this it is, down. This is good. It's a good, good range. Okay. What time in history would you have liked to be born in and why? So you're not time traveling. You are born at this point in history. And you're not allowed to say today. This... Okay, am I going to die, if you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I always say I would time travel back to the bubonic plague. But if I was born in the bubonic plague, I think I would die. Yeah. So maybe not then, actually. Okay. Um, this is not a time travel. This is like, you know, if you <laughs> I'm could... I'm going to live through it. Okay. Um, we, we could... Okay, no, that's an interesting answer. So let's, let's suppose that somehow you're invulnerable to the plague. You're do saying... I live, I, if I can live to the age I am at now... Yeah. yeah, I would go back to the people who played. I don't know why, but at school it always fascinated me. Okay, uh, just what, in terms of the, the lack of understanding yeah. that we have and, and just the yeah. craziness that, you know, was it like a third of Europe died yeah. or something? I like... think it would just be crazy. Yeah. Just... Those big masks kind of freak me out though. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, either that or the Great Fire of London. I would love to see that. I just remember being fascinated by them at school. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. I was um, sort of... I was, I was expecting that you were going to kind of think of, I don't know, like an early explorer, Charles Darwin-esque, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, true. The thing Be the is, first person to go to the Galapagos. But Darwin, like, well, his theories weren't proven or like, accepted until no, after he was dead. So, like, even if I was around at his time, I would have been like, you're lying. Because <laughs> all scientists <laughs> typically club together. Yeah. Like, everyone was beefing Darwin saying, you're, just, you're not telling the truth. So, yeah. I would, mm. would have been cool to be Darwin's assistant, but he was already an assistant. Right, yeah. So I wouldn't have been able to go... The assistant any... to the yeah, assistant. Assist... Yeah, the... no. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely the plague or the Great Fire. That's a, that's okay. a weird answer for a, for no, a like, no, no. biologist. But when would you go back to? When would I go back to? Um, it's too much choice. I think No, I think for me, for a host of reasons, like ancient Greece. Oh, that's a good one. I think. That's a good one. Because it was kind of... It was like the start of mathematical thinking. Yeah. That's not to say that... The, Who was that... the first number thinker? He was like number file. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> lover of numbers. Um, I'll be honest, I don't actually know the first in, in that mm. sense, but in terms of like the stuff that we still study now and use now, mm. so many things are named after Greek thinkers. Yeah. And it just feels to me, you know, I guess you, you have earlier like major civilizations across sort of um, Asia, like China in particular, I think mm -hmm. is possibly one of the oldest sort of ancient civilizations and obviously Egypt yeah. doing really cool stuff, especially with like pyramids and architecture, which is quite mathematical. Yeah. But I just feel like there was something about ancient Greece where there were clearly a, a group of men, I was going to say people, but clearly <laughs> men, who just their job was to just like sit and think. Right, they yeah. were obviously incredibly privileged. Yeah, but like you know, like not out fighting. Ara you know, I'm, I'm not just so obviously. There's there's all the mathematicians like Archimedes and um, Plato and Pythagoras, but then you've also got like um, the guy who did Hippocrates, who did like medicine. You've got just all yeah. of these things. Like it was just options. there were just people whose job it was. It felt like that was really the time when humans had built like enough of a civilization that you didn't have to worry about like how am I going to live? Yeah, have a bit of free time. You had free time, right? Philosophy and they, to, could become a thing. Yeah, so it feels yeah. like that would be to be some of, you know, part of that. Yeah, that would be cool. Kind of what I'm doing now, in a way. Like, you know, <laughs> I spend my day, day just doing, yeah. talking about maths, thinking about maths, but doing it as like one of the first ever humans to be able to do it. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Because like probably everything you think about is a new theory, which is just so exciting. So Yeah, that's true. That kind of, I just... Yeah. But then I don't know if it'd be really infuriating because at the same time, you'd be coming up with all these theories but then probably not being able to test them. I was going to say, you'd think like this might happen to... and then just think, oh, okay, next And you'd one. also... <laughs> maybe I'd hate it because maybe every single thing would just be like, this is magic. Because like, there's just no understanding. Yeah, what would you focus anything. on? Yeah. So, it'd be overwhelming, I think. Could go either way. But either way, I think it'd be a cool time 
uh, yeah. I think but very Olympics different space. answers there. Very different. Answers. <laughs> you want to go to like these crazy disaster <laughs> zones, almost like, <laughs> like London burning to yeah. pieces. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Right. Um, I think should we do one more? Yes. Let's see if we can get a go out on a bang with Oof. a maths question. Mathsy, mathsy. Potentially, or Oxford. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it's neither Oxford nor maths, but it's an oh. excellent final question. Okay. Um, what is the best fan mail you've ever received? Oh. So I'm guessing could be either someone who's emailed you or Instagrammed you or just generally. Um, this is aimed at people who do, you know, content creators. So. Okay. I actually have a couple of... So if anyone who doesn't know, I'm an access student. I come from an access uh, outreach background. Um, and some of my content surrounds kind of grant funding and being yep. an underrepresented student, yep. especially as women in STEM. Um, mm -hmm. yep. And I've had a couple of people say that they've like passed their vivas and that my content has helped them like stay motivated and be proud of what they're doing. So probably that. Yep. Or when people will message and say that they've been inspired and got accepted to doing a PhD or a DPhil or something. That's really heartwarming. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I agree. They are the ones that, that also are my yeah, favourite. Yeah, definitely. Ones see, yeah. Right? Just just when someone. Just to think. It's like heartwarming, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. It, it really yeah. is. I think this is it's a very wholesome note for us to end on. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, I think for a lot of, um, I guess, people like ourselves who are doing, trying to kind of promote access and outreach mm -hmm. within our yeah. subjects. I think that is ultimately that is like the reason we do it's it. It's like the goal, isn't it? It's yeah. The people so, that you yeah. can actually reach and you can I'm not claiming that we well at least I wouldn't claim that I have like actually changed someone's life, but you yeah. have like just to think even, even just like a little Yeah, even just a tiny like, bit. If you just slightly thing, yeah. help somebody. Yeah. I think it, it does Definitely. it gives you the warm fuzzies. Yeah. <laughs> or if someone's actually messaged me saying I got a grant from XYZ that I've like shared the grant for, I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like that's awesome. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Well, as I say, on that heartwarming <laughs> note, um, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. It's been very it's, fun. Yeah, no, it has. As, as, as you said, when the camera stopped <laughs> recording 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Time's flying. Time is flying. No, it's, it's been a real pleasure. It's been really good fun. Um, so again, thank you, Katie. Do go and check out your At Instagram. PhD with Katie. Yes. There we go. And, and also YouTube. Yes. And also YouTube. I'll, I'll link all of the things in the description as usual, but go and check it out. It's really, really uh, very entertaining stuff. Thank you. Um, so again, thank you, Katie. Thank you to all of you for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, potentially from Katie's <laughs> audience, if you subscribe, that'd be awesome. I will talk about maths most of the time, but you know, we do also get fun guests along <laughs> to do this kind of thing. Um, so thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Adios.